In this video, we will learn how to deploy TLS Secure Redis cluster in Kubernetes. First, let's uh, look at the YAML. So here you can see I have uh, YAML in this YAML API version is kubedb.com slash v1 alpha 2 and uh, kind is Redis. And in the metadata section, we have a name and namespace. So the uh, I want to name this database to Redis cluster and namespace is demo. And in the spec, I have version 6.2.5. Uh, and uh, we support other version if uh, 5 and 4 but uh, to work with TLS you need to have version uh, 6 so uh, we did the version 4 and 5 does not support TLS so here mode is cluster we want to uh, run our database in cluster mode uh, in the cluster we specified that we want three master and one replicas and so there will be total three shards and a storage type is durable which means that uh, the data will be uh, secured during the pod restart. It won't be lost. And uh, here, storage type uh, in the storage we have specified that we want 100 megabyte storage, and storage class name is standard. And in the termination policy, you can see it is uh, set to wipeout. Uh, it is. It means that when we delete the cluster, all the pods and all the objects that this uh, DB object owns will be deleted. So you can use uh, other termination policies such as do not terminate to uh, prevent your database from accidental deletion. And after that, you can see the TLS section. In the TLS section, uh, we have uh, issuer reference. So uh, in kubedb, we manage TLS using uh, SART manager. So SART manager provides issuer and cluster issuer to um, to generate the certificates. So here we are using issuer. So you need to have uh, you need to have uh, install you need to install SART manager to work with TLS in kubedb. So uh, I I have uh, created uh, the name of the issuer is Redis CA issuer and uh, kind is issuer. So we need to provide the issuer name to uh, work with TLS. So this issuer will generate certificates for your cluster. And in the certificate section we have. Uh, alias is server and the organization is kubedb server dns name is localhost and ip address is 127.0.0.1 so let's deploy this yaml so you can see in my workstation uh, in the i have already installed kubedb and uh, kubedb ops manager so kubedb ops manager is our enterprise uh, operator and uh, here i have all the yamls so i will i will uh, let's see first we have the issuer yeah, so we don't have the issuer. So let's say uh, we will uh, deploy the issuer first. Yeah, so issuer is created. So let's just look at the issuer YAML. So in the issuer YAML, you can see that API version is startmanager.io slash version one and uh, kind is issuer. And in the metadata section, the name is Redis CA issuer and namespace is demo. And in the important field here is a secret name. We need to provide a secret to create the issuer. This secret contains CA certificate and CA key. Using this key, the issuer will generate certificates. So uh, I have already generated a certificates name uh, Redis CA. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, as you can see, I have uh, previously created a secret named Redis CA. Uh, in this secret, I have my CA certificate and uh, CA key and i am using this secret to create the issuer so, okay so let's see if the issuer is created yeah uh, the issuer is created uh, and uh, another thing is i am using kind to run kubernetes here so um, here and let's now deploy the yaml to for the cluster okay so i have uh, as you can see the i have deployed applied the yaml and here you can see Redis cluster is provisioning and new database, uh, new ports are creating. So in each each pod means one instance of Redis object. So they will the after the ports is created created the uh, ports will try to communicate to each other each other and uh, form the cluster. So uh, meanwhile, let's have a look what's happening behind the scene. So uh, here, you, as a user, I have uh, created Redis CRD, and this Redis CRD is watched by kubedb operator. And after I create, applied the YAML, kubedb operator will first create a service account and the service. Using that service, we can connect to the database. After that, kubedb operator will uh, create cluster role and cluster role binding. Then uh, it will create the stateful sets. So, uh, in this case, we have three master, that means three shard. So there will be three stateful set. 
and then uh, QPP operator will create pod disruption budget and after that it will create service monitor and app binding. So let's have a look how things are there. As you can see this database status is ready. So that means that database is successfully uh, provisioned. So now uh, let's uh, see if the service is created. Yeah, so in the demo namespace, you can see we have two services. One service is for internal port communication, headless service, and this Redis cluster service, it is type of cluster IP. So we can connect to this service to communicate with database to perform the database operations. And uh, for the demonstration purpose, I will just exec into a pod to do the operation. So let's see if we can uh, see how many nodes are there. You, you can see that there is no information it is giving us because uh, we don't have a TLS secure connection. So let's just connect to the database using the certificates. Yeah, we can, uh, we have connected to the database. Now let's just uh, get the information. So you can see we have a uh, total six nodes. Let's, uh, let's set some data. And let's now uh, exit to uh, another node and try to get this data. So let's just uh, exit into this node. Again, uh, if we want to get the data without TLS, it won't get give us any data. Uh, yeah, so let's again connect with uh, the certificates. Now let's try to get the data. Yeah, now we can get the data. So uh, you can see the, it is uh, that easy to create a create Redis uh, provision Redis cluster using KubeDB. You just need to deploy a YAML and everything will be created. And with that, uh, in the next video, uh, we'll have a look at uh, how to scale up and scale up and down your database. So thank you.